Physical Rehabilitation Using Balance Tutor System. This talk will discuss the scientific and clinical aspects of perturbation-based balance training. The body receives sensory information from our environment through our skin, muscles, tendons, eyes, and ears through the sensory system. The brain analyzes this information in order to interact with its environment. Sufficient sensory integration ability, including vestibular, visual, and proprioception, is required to undertake functional tasks that require balance and gait ability. Deficits in receiving and processing the sensory information may result in balance and gait disorder. Sensory integration ability develops through childhood and adolescence. However, aging and some neurological injury and disease can reduce this ability. There are two main strategies of postural control. Anticipatory postural adjustment, or APA, for instance, walking down the street. The second one is Compensatory postural adjustment, or CPA, like slipping or tripping during the gait. During a functional movement, for example, controlled walking, the body's movements themselves cause a perturbation to balance as gravity acts on the moving body. The internal forces and torques elicited by these movements lead to a continuous, self-regulated, but controlled change in the body's center of mass. These controlled and coordinated center of mass movements are considered as expected perturbations and initiate additional APAs. These APAs result in the task appropriate and planned muscle coordination pattern required to produce a ground reaction force that both counteracts the gravitational force and also causes a propulsive force to displace the body in the intended direction. This controlled, expected, and calculated movement in the center of mass is a prerequisite to the performance of the task in an efficient manner and allows for controlled walking. However, the center of mass will be moved in an unexpected perturbation like a surprise slip or trip occurs during gait. In this case, the subject needs to react in order to regain balance and prevent a fall. Mashian, in a 1992 publication, state that anticipatory postural adjustments APAs, control the position of the center of mass COM, of the body by activating the trunk and leg muscles prior to a forthcoming body perturbation, thus minimizing the danger of losing equilibrium. Alexandrov, AV, in 2005, published that the compensatory postural adjustments, or CPAs, are initiated by the sensory feedback signaling an unexpected perturbation and serve as a mechanism for restoration of the position of the COM after a perturbation has already occurred. The video shows another example of a CPA muscle coordination strategy. The bottle, which represents an unexpected postural perturbation, is being placed in the hand of the subject by a third party. Please pay attention to the amount of elbow extension exhibited as the subject reacts to the perturbation. The video shows another example of an APA muscle coordination strategy. The bottle is self-transferred by the subject. This represents an expected postural perturbation. Please pay attention to the smaller amount of elbow extension exhibited as the APA has proactively stabilized the elbow and shoulder before the perturbation. For almost all ADL activities, we need a high enough proactive and reactive responsibility level to maintain balance. Both these balance strategies are needed not only in the standing position, but also during the gait. Impaired ability in one of these strategies can lead to a loss of balance and a fall. In this CCTV video of a fall, we can see that the subject does not have sufficient reactive responsibility to maintain balance after a foot collision during gait. Traditional balance rehabilitation still relies mainly on voluntary exercises practice. Factors that have prevented in clinic application of unexpected perturbation training include the inability to customize perturbation and ensure patient safety during reactive response training. Other factors include the lack of perturbation intensity repeatability as well as the inability to use the required acceleration intensity and perturbation direction needed to actively displace the COM both during the stance and gait phase. Finally, the inability to report on the treatment in order to objectively document treatment outcomes and follow-up has not been available. 
The Balance Tutor Perturbation Treadmill allows for customizable and safe medial, lateral, left and right side perturbation. In addition, anterior and posterior perturbations can be triggered. These perturbations can be achieved while the client is standing and during gait. The perturbation protocol is easy and quick to customize to the client's ability. Safety features include a harness and emergency stop. The system allows for fast client setup to fit into the busy clinic schedule. Clinical Applications By customizing the intensity of unexpected postural perturbation, we can target the ankle strategy, hip, and stepping strategy. Medial and lateral perturbation in a standing position allows for implementation of several important clinical applications such as practicing body weight bearing, crossover stepping, and sensory integration. Medial, lateral, and interior postural perturbation during gait also allows the practice of additional important clinical components such as the execution of a compensatory step of the swing leg, stabilization of the stance leg, and sensory integration practice. The sympathetic nervous system is more activated during a reactive postural response compared to a proactive postural response. The video demonstrates how triggering of the autonomic system allows for greater muscle facilitation. Reactive postural response practice will challenge the sympathetic system and will give excellent facilitation for muscle activation. According to Lexel, in 1997, the type 2 fast-twitch muscle fibers are decreased due to aging and reduced physical activities. Recently, Martin and colleagues in 2019 state physical and functional losses due to aging and diseases decrease human mobility and postural balance that can be improved by appropriate physical training. When compared to each other, type 1 fibers have a low threshold and a slower firing rate and type 2 fibers have a higher threshold and firing rate. Type 2 fibers are recruited only after type 1 fibers as the task need to implement additional force and speed of movement progresses. As we age or due to disease, we limit the proactive speed and force of muscle movements and this will result in lose it. We therefore need to safely practice movements and recruit both type 1 and type 2 fibers. By implementing reactive response training, we can force an elderly client to train to their maximum ability and use it. The Balance Tutor also enables the practice of customized and computerized weight-bearing practice using center of pressure feedback. The Balance Tutor system also allows for gait analysis with detailed spatiotemporal parameters including step length, step width, percentage of double support, stance and swing phase of gait. The Balance Tutor can be used for neurological problems such as stroke, head injury, spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, Parkinson's disease, and peripheral nerve injury, orthopedic rehabilitation like joint surgery or fracture, amputation, prosthetic rehabilitation, muscle weakness, ligament sprain, and tendon strain, vestibular rehabilitation, sport medicine, and research. The system is FDA and CE certified and is HIPAA compliant. Thank you very much for your attention.